so my wife is watching from home, and I was not making her giggle. That, that didn't happen. Um, so I'm a public transit user. Uh, I hope a lot of people in here as well. Uh, and, I, and I talk about how public transit is so important from a socially conscious, environmental responsible way. The reality is, is that anybody who's ever driven on the Parafique knows that you take your life in your own hands. And that's why I use public transit. And this is coming from someone from Los Angeles where people actually shoot each other on the freeway. I started my career uh, working in transit design. I, I built bus routes, I connected people to businesses, and it was pretty cool. Um, moving lots of people became important. It, mobility is kind of a crux of our day. Uh, but what I found in the last couple of years in working in this business is that it's not just about moving people because in reality mobility has not really modernized itself in the last hundred years. Um, we used to look at New York City as kind of the mecca of mass transportation in the U.S. And, and in New York you have subway, you have bus, but you don't really have an organization of the trips. We still rely on you to make that kind of organization. And what does that mean? Every day you take a train possibly to work, take a bus to school, go shopping, but it's still, it's still organized as a series of trips. Now digital advancements have allowed you to do a trip planner or do things that modernize the way you conduct your business. But again, it's still in a disorganized single format. What we need to look at is not trips, but journeys. Most of us start and end our day in the same spot. And where we go during the day needs to be organized. And the, the real problem behind organizing transportation is twofold. First is a lack of leadership. And, and what do I mean by that? Leadership in this business and every business. We talked about Silicon Valley a few minutes ago. Leadership is so much about who wins. The winner is the leader. And the second problem is the lack of a community. And, and there's nothing wrong with competition and there's nothing wrong with the way things are being done now. But combining good, strong leadership with the real community is the way to push an ecosystem forward. Let's talk about competition a little bit. About five years ago, there was a little company, um, well, it's not little anymore, but there was these two guys in Paris. They couldn't get a taxi cab. They're technology guys. So they went back to the US, went back to New York, and they figured out a way to build a technology platform that connected drivers to people. They're not a transportation company. And, and that's how Uber was formed. And today, Uber is the cool kid in the class. They're the ones that we all use. They're, and I don't mean to say that, but I use them from time to time. Um, they have really redefined how people move around. And then you have us on the other side, the old dogs, the transportation operators in the business. We have billions upon billions upon billions of dollars invested in this business, whether it's buses or trains or roads or tracks. And we all generate tons and tons of data. So we should stop thinking of leading this industry in competition. It's not us versus Uber, Uber versus Lyft. It's together how we can do things. So. That's leadership. Now we talk about the community. And, and that's why this is so important we share. We share and, and what the previous panel just talked about. It, it's communities, again, are what makes things happen. And we have too, longer, too long been defined by a top-down strategy of businesses telling consumers, this is what you can buy and consumers buying it. Communities change that. Communities are the ones that tell businesses what to do. And especially when we talk about open data. Open data is not something that's new. Data has been produced for years. But what's different today is the sheer amount of data that's being produced. The, the amount that is being produced not just by businesses, but by you, 
when you're tweeting, when you're on your cell phones. There has to be a way to connect that data with the businesses to improve life for everyone. And how do we fuel this community? We have to start with open source. There are too many barriers to entry in proprietary software. We have to make sure that every single one of us has access to the same level of data as everyone else. That helps us co-create solutions. And this co-creation, this collaborative environment, is where most of the world's best inventions have been made. And finally, this community needs evangelists. And they come from the community. These are the people who speak the values of this community and what make it important to businesses. What do these communities have to work with? That's the problem today. We've, got, we've talked about leadership, we've talked about the community. Now we need to talk about this data. Our company carries about two billion people worldwide every year. They spend about two and a half hours on social media every day. And the number of tweets and the number of Facebook messages about what they ate for breakfast and things like that is data that this community can use and that businesses can use. How do we harness all of this technology and harness all of this data in a way that we can benefit the world? And how do we give a medium to a community that changes competition to cooperation? For data producers, this medium is critical. Transit operators such as ourselves, again, produce lots of data. But cities like Boston, when they opened up their data six years ago, they were actually able to have small and medium-sized developers create apps for them. They didn't have to build an innovation department. They didn't have to go out to a big development firms. They had small startups create applications just for them. As a result, the Metropolitan ba Boston Transportation Authority has its own app store. You can go there, you can download applications that teach you how to get in and around the city. The city of New York opened up all of its data and created a community where urban planning, sustainable living plans can all be done by residents of the city of New York. And developers. These are the biggest users or potential users of open data. City Mapper takes in open data, opens up APIs for smaller and mid-sized development companies to actually create trip planners. In, in my mind, that's not good enough. I think we need to allow developers and the community direct access to the data. And that's what we want to actually announce here, and we're really excited to announce at WeShare, is a medium for developers, for users, and for businesses and members of this field to access data. We call it Catalog. Catalog is an open source, open data repository of all the transportation data in the world. The goal is to have a single place where data producers, users, and developers can go that has up-to-date, real-time, and synced data. So whether it's in one place or another, it doesn't matter. It's up to date and it will be accessible in catalog. We have some really big ambitions with this, but we need the community to help us. The goal isn't just to turn data into information, but it's to turn it from information to knowledge and knowledge into action. And for us, the community and the businesses that support the community are the key to that. That's all I have.